Hey, what is up, YouTube.com? It is your boy, Ojama Garrett, and I'm imagining a really good hook right now that'll keep your attention here, and then that I just sent it. Now, with that being said, this is the uh, episode three of How to Grow Wealth uh, Proverbs. If you're new here, uh, I don't necessarily know how to build any wealth, like specifically because I haven't, I've, I've done well for myself. I've worked my ass off to get a house and stuff like that, but I don't know how to like build a business from scratch or any money makers I think would actually get you out of the nine to five. But I think that Proverbs um, can, uh, re regardless if you're a Christian or not too, which is the uh, kicker here. And that is the point of this series is whether you are a Christian or not, materialist, atheist, secular, whatever, agnostic or Jew or I mean, Jews, uh, Jews know what's up. Jews know how to get money because uh, that would also be one of my arguments that the Bible grows wealth is that the Jews are very, 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 very Bible oriented. They like use a lot of the Old Testament and the Christian Bible to grow a lot of wealth. Obviously, you know, their stereotypes, they have a lot of money. So there we go. Let's just hop right into it. Rambling, rambling done. Um, so this is Proverbs 3. Um, wisdom bestows well-being. I don't know what bestows mean. I feel like I do, but I just want to know for sure to say it to you guys. Uh, bestow. Confer or present. Okay. Wisdom presents well-being so if you have wisdom that's what i think that it is claiming is that wisdom having wisdom will give you well-being it'll present it to you and i'm sure there's plenty of i don't think that needs a lot of argumentation to prove that is true i think that should just ring true inside of you if uh, you know what i mean wisdom being making good decisions with knowledge you know what i mean knowledge is one thing facts are one thing but wisdom is how to apply that what you ought to do with that and wisdom does do that so then i don't think that's very contentious and i think that's easy to understand but that is our title here so let's hop right into it uh proverbs is like the king solomon the richest jewish king in the uh history of uh jew human humanity whatever so that's that's why he, he's speaking to you my son whatever you know it could be daughter whatever but he's just trying to uh, pass wisdom down to simple brained smooth brains like me to help um speed up to how he he got wealth or maintained wealth or built wealth or uh you know grew the kingdom okay so that's like the whole origin of proverbs so my son do not forget my teaching but keep my commands in your heart he does this a lot. He says this all the time. Do not forget this. Keep it in your heart. He's, 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 he's implying, I think, to what we need to try to memorize some of this and think about it later and to, like, recall it uh, so it's as much in you as possible so that you can apply it when situations come up and you're not quite sure what to do. If this pops out in you, then you can apply or not apply type of stuff like that uh, because the reason why he's doing that is because they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity, okay? So prosperity is another word for wealth. So again. Wisdom will bring you prosperity, and King Solomon, richest Jewish king, agrees with me. So let's let's keep going. Um, I'll read and then stop whenever I feel like I should. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. So like like I said, you just cut this out if you're secular, if you're materialistic. In the sight of man. Because it's true. You will. Look at Mr. Beast, bro. I use Mr. Beast as the example all the time. He's gained favor in the sight of man. You can say what you want about Mr. Beast, but you can criticize that he's only doing it for money or da 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 but you really can't. You seem The more people criticize Mr. Beast, the more they come off, I feel, to normal people that he's they're super petty and bitter. Because um, Mr. Beast is only doing good things, you know what I mean? Like, he gets millions and millions of dollars and they flow into his hands and he does not. He, like, channels them back into a good mission, you know what I'm saying? But anyway. So love, faithfulness, okay? Don't let them ever leave you. If you if you stay faithful to people, you know what I mean? This is kind of no-brainer, but it's, like, so easy that, like, in the moment where you're in a position to, like, lash out at somebody or not forgive somebody or to enact revenge on somebody or, like, bickering at the uh, office or whatever, it's easy to forget this stuff. So I think that's why it's very important to just, like, Re, to really hammer it in, and that's what he's doing here by saying, write them on the tablet of your heart. You know, metaphorically speaking, obviously. Um, if you do this and you act in love and faithfulness, it increases the likelihood that you are going to have just a good name forever. Okay. Sorry, I was just checking settings. My camera I was lagging out a couple times here. Um, so, if you have favor, 
and a good name, what does that sound like in today's world? In today's landscape, if you ever looked at any business uh, YouTube, that sounds like personal brand. Okay, so that's just think of that when you when you when you um when you think of that you will win favor in a good name. That's what personal brand is. So, like, let's say for instance, my YouTube channel. If I try my hardest to act with love and faithfulness, no matter what on the platform then, you know, I may not grow quickly in virality through doing crazy stuff like my, uh, fuck this camera, dude. This is so weird. Um, sorry. I think I know why. Anyway, yeah. Um, so like, yeah, I'm not, okay, just like, you know, forewarning again, you know, five minutes and I doubt anybody's here because YouTube is a space where like, you know, I don't know, there's a whole meta of retention and stuff and I'm not actually doing that. But uh, if you're still here, um, yeah, uh, I am not really going to edit this or make this really like good. I'm just going to try practicing by like reiterating, uploading and stuff like that. So I'd be like, you're gonna have to bear with me while I figure out the logistics, like my camera lagging out and shit. Because when my camera lags, sometimes my mic freaks out too. So I just, I'm just trying to fix that live. Anyway. So let's just move on. I think I said enough. I think personal brand, it's easy for you. I think hopefully that connects the dots for you guys. Like favorite and a good name. You're right, right, right. So even if you don't, even if you don't go viral doing crazy stuff, building a good personal brand means that everybody that does come into your fold. I don't like saying this, but it is true. Uh, you will be able to gain more from them. Uh, the reason why I don't like saying this is because I watch a lot of this guy, Alex Ramosi. I love his content. I think he's really good. I think he's like net positive for the world and stuff like that. Him and his wife, Layla. But they like, they present a lot of this stuff as like tricks, trickery, but uh, whatever. Anyway, this is true though. You will win favor and a good name. So you will build your personal brand by having love and faithfulness and never letting him leave you. So that is true. If you have love and faithfulness, like no matter what you do, you're gonna be more trustworthy. You're gonna have more favor, more good name, and that is worth a lot. Like especially if you're down on your luck, that is the most important time your personal brand comes into uh, question. If you're like borrowing money from people and never paying them back, or you're making prom promises to people and never following through, and you're hurting your favor and your good name, that's gonna hurt you. Like it'll be, oh, it's it's not a big deal when everything is okay, but as soon as you need somebody, nobody will be there. So anyway. With all that, seven minutes. We're only four verses in. Let's move on. Uh, five. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not under your own understanding. So, okay. Again, in all your ways, submit to him and he'll make your path straight. This is big warning. Big warning. I know. Hold on. Hold on. Quick. Before you, before you completely shut down your brain, before you completely just completely turn this off, um, just take this out. Just take this word out and just like trust in the science. Okay. Meme, I'm, I'm memeing a little bit here. But I know, trust in the science, trust in the peer-reviewed paperwork. Okay, I mean, in a little bit. All right, you know what I mean. Think a dream it, do it. Okay, okay, perfect. Now trust in the science, peer review with all your heart, and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to them, and they will make all your paths straight. Okay. Jokes aside, um. This is, in essence, it's it's a call to become humble because pride, this is, I know a lot of people, I get, this is the most pushback I get from all circles. Pride equal poor, okay? So if you have a lot of pride, you will have a lot of poor, okay? And there, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So every pride equals how much poor you're going to have, okay? And that's, 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 that's science, okay? This is math. Okay, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Pride equal poor. Pride to poor ratio, okay? So this is a call to become humble. So the reason why pride will make you poor is because, um, I don't know if you've noticed, I don't have, this is more of a feelings argument or like my own personal experience. But whenever I have thought I was hot shit at anything, had any sort of proudness, any pride in myself, um, then all of a sudden I wasn't anxious about anything. Um, which is cool, right? It sounds great. You know, you gotta, uh, you know, that confidence that you should, you don't deserve. Um, sounds dandy, but that's what, um, the life that wants to eat you wants. Uh, you know, like the entire environment outside of American society, like in the rainforest, if you think that you know shit and you're like, yeah, I know how to identify plants. I'm the fucking identify plants king. And then you eat 
who cares? You know what I mean? That doesn't matter. What matters is if you eat plants that'll kill you or eat plants that are um, that won't kill you. But essentially, what pride does is it shuts off uh, danger signals in your brain. And once you think you know everything, then you're more likely to make mistakes because you're not being as careful. Uh, and this is why it's a call to be humble and to trust the Lord. Because imagine the Lord was real. Imagine God is real. He would know better than you. So trusting in somebody who knows more than you, that's why I said science peer review. It's because those people know more than you. So trusting them is going to lead you to better results. But it requires a humility. And every ounce of pride you have in yourself is going to get like increase your your poorness, like because if you're prideful and you think you know it all, how come you're not rich? If you're pride and you think you know it all, if you're proud of the accomplishments you've had or whatever, what have they gotten you? You know what I mean? Like what are, what do they have? Why are you on this video? You know what I'm saying? Like that's the pride is like actually, may, you know I'm freestyling here, so I don't have a lot of things presented, but I'm pretty sure if you go look up the debates about pride or whatever. I'm sure somebody else can do a lot better job than me. I just know this is real. This is real. Okay. And it's, it's proof. Um, pride equals poor. Don't be prideful. Uh, it's better. Like if you beat yourself up, this is what I say. Like I made this point before. It's like, who is like, I made a video about pride being bad on my channel. It's an older one. It's kind of rough and it's not really, it's like a bad commentary, but I make the point. It's like, I, I, I present two scenarios. There's a, there's me. I'm so, I hate myself. I hate a lot of things about myself. So I beat myself up and I think myself so low, so pathetic, like scum. And the reason it's not important, but I do. So what it does is it makes me like overcompensate. I'm really, I'm a, I'm a uh, insecure overachiever. That's what I call myself now. And it's like, I will try and try and try and try. It'll never be enough because it's never good enough because I, I view myself so low. Uh, so then I'm like, but it's like, a humbleness about myself. Maybe I feel viewing myself too low and that's like unhealthy. But then the, the inverse of that is somebody who is so proud of themselves. They think they're so good. They're so proud of their accomplishments and stuff like that. There's no reason to improve because they're so great. You know what I mean? Like which one I know my, my example of me isn't healthy, but out of the two unhealthy um, mentalities, which one's actually going to get you something? You know what I mean? So that's my main, that's my main gripe with pride. Anyway, trigger, trigger alert, trigger alert. Should have had a trigger alert in the Bible for me, so I didn't get so triggered seeing that. But anyway, um, seven, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Okay, true. Just big true. Big facts. Okay, do not be wise in your own eyes. That's what it means. That's what all the things I was just saying. Don't do that. Okay, the, the Jew King Solomon agrees with me. Richest Jew ever. So I think that means I'm more correct than you are if you think pride's good. Anyway, it'll bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Um... Maybe he's speaking figuratively here. Maybe he's speaking metaphorically. Maybe he's speaking literally. Uh, I could I could probably make a case for both. I, I believe I could believe it. Like being humble and taking care of yourself and being prideful and partying all the time. Um, yeah, I could see it like working both ways. Anyway, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to the overflowing and your vats will uh, brim over with new wine. Okay. So here is very interesting. That's what I was talking about with Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast is the perfect example of why this is actually true because Mr. Beast, as he gets money, he just gives it back. You know what I mean? Um, when he started giving, I think what, what really sparked, he, he started going viral doing crazy shit, like counting to a million or whatever and watching 10 hours of dance till your dad or something like that. And then uh, like doing crazy stuff like that. And he was building his channel slowly over time, but he really, really took off. And I think he credits it to when he got his first sponsor or something like that. He's like, give me $10,000 and I'll give it to a homeless guy. And then I went and watched that video and it's like, it's very moving. But like, I was like, yeah, I get it. This guy, like, that's what it really turned on to me, the power of giving. So that's what this is. Um, honor the Lord with your wealth. But like, if you want to change this to make it like uh, more useful, um, why or why the why honor God with your wealth is that like if you give your best friend a gift, is he going to like you more or less? You know what I mean? So then like the, uh, the attitude here is if you honor God by giving your wealth away, which God says in the Bible that he is all poor people or something like that or whatever, or dedicate something to him. You know, if you dedicate something to your best friend, he's going to like you more or less. You know what I mean? So if like God's your best friend and you dedicate money to him or whatever, or the universe or the manifestation or karma or whatever you want to say. Wouldn't you get more favor from that being? But that aside, that aside, um, the power of giving, like you give what you, you get what you give. So if you don't give nobody nothing, 
nobody's going to give you nothing. But if you're giving all your money away constantly and stuff like that, and people you're known for that, it's just going to increase the likelihood that like you're going to get opportunities, you know, because there's not there's monetary value, but then there's opportunity, 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 opportunity. Sorry, I can't speak very well. <laughs> Sorry. Some words I struggle with. There's 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 opportunities, there's favors, there's social credit, there's like a bunch of different currencies, there's a bunch of different value exchange, exchanges that are going on in society that have nothing to do with money. So like what it's saying here with your first of first fruits of all of your crops. So like the first of your day, give it to you know, give it away. The first of your this or that, you know, the first money you get from your business, give it away. The first of your yada yada yada, give it away. Just if you if you just keep that attitude of giving, then it just keeps the door open for you to be given as well. That's the, that's the power here. That's what's going on here. And that's what, how it'll lead. Like, it seems counterintuitive. A lot of this shit seems counterintuitive when you're just trying to think about it. But like when you, I don't know, I've tried a lot of this stuff and it's, it's, it's always, it's take my personal experience. I guess that's also weight, a little bit of weight, but um, I mean, I guess you don't have to believe me if you don't want to, but every time I've given stuff away, it's only made, any situation I have been in, any moment, better. You know what I mean? I, when I donated to the food pantry, um, they, uh, like AMPI, uh, I donated, like, they're like, we're trying to get everybody to donate a quarter of a paycheck. Uh, so that I'm like, okay, do five bucks. I don't give a fuck. And then I did that. And then, like, a week later, I got a really cool shirt. And I was like, oh, cool. I, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it wasn't like a perfect verbatim, um, like, cash for cash trade because obviously I ended up paying more but it was just like yeah that's kind of cool and I felt like I was really helping the community out it just felt me more it made me feel good it made me feel like I was more connected that I was actually making a difference with my labor so it actually like put a little bit more of a pip to my step is that I was donating money to the the food pantry and that uh, and I was directly contributing to that because they claim they oh, whatever giving gifts like you give what you get you get what you give um, so if you give nothing, you get nothing. If you give everything, you'll get everything, if that makes sense. And like the whole universe is bigger than you. So if you're a little piece of it and you give the universe, like, I don't know, like sometimes it's probably not going to work and there's always exceptions to everything. So that's, I guess the scary part is the risk that's associated with giving all your stuff away. But like, it's not even asking you to give all your stuff away. It's always, it's just like telling you to give first so that like, if you give first, there you go. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't have to be everything. So if you make ten dollars, giving one dollar of that away, and I know, I know, I know, we live in America, and like you know, rents five million dollars a minute. But like, it's just better for your soul, if if anything. But yeah. But this is also making the claim: your barns will be filled with the overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. So it is also making the claim. And test it, test it. Give a little bit of money away and see what happens. Give a little bit of this away. Give a little bit of your time away. Give a little uh, niceness away. Just test it. I guarantee you will become more wealthy. If you just add, if you have an attitude, you know, just compare the two attitudes. Uh, who's going to have more money? Somebody who's a giving person or somebody who's a getter? We'll call them a getter. Somebody who doesn't give ever. Which one is going to make more money? That's what, That's my question to you. That's my question to you. And honestly, think about it. I would make the claim that the giver is going to get more than the getter. Okay? Giver. Not whatever. So whatever. Giving is going to get you more. But yeah. Let's move on. I've made this an 18-minute video. Whoopsies. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplined those he loves and as a father, the son he delights in. Um, this is very true to me. I had to discipline my three-year-old and I felt really bad about it. And I don't want to... Like, I felt bad because I, I feel like he doesn't understand. But, like, I I don't think he understands how much I loved him. And if I didn't love him, I just let him be a little, a little shithead. You know what I mean? But like, I had to discipline him because I'm trying to look out for him. And the same is true. Imagine there's a creator. If you, if you feel life is punishing you, life may be like, and you're not dead. You can just look at that as a lesson that you're not being as a light as you're being taught lessons. And like, I mean, this one's kind of hard to wrap your head around if you don't believe in a loving God and stuff like that. So maybe just ignore this one. But still, um, discipline, just about, you know, if somebody's disciplining you, like your father or something like that, um, it's because they love you or they're trying to love you. So, yeah. Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding. Pretty self-explanatory. For she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. Which, you know, think about that. Literally, wisdom, knowledge, what you should do with knowledge. Like, imagine if you were the person who knew 
how to make the first computer. You know what I mean? Or um, what if you were Steve Jobs? You know what I mean? He had knowledge to get wealth. He became a wealth generator, uh, not the gold itself. You know what I mean? So wisdom is more valuable because wisdom begets knowledge or wisdom begets wealth because with wisdom, you know how to apply knowledge. Therefore, you can grow wealth no matter what. So like you can lose everything. And then if you still have yourself and you still have your wisdom, you can make wealth again. Okay. She's more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Right. Things cannot compare to wisdom. I don't think so either. Like I would rather know how to like, if I could learn how to fly, I would rather have that knowledge than have a plane. Um, how to build a plane would be better than having one plane. You know what I mean? Like if the plane was break breaks or, you know what I mean? The, 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 the plane breaks. I don't know how to build another one. Not a big deal. Long life is in her right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honor. True big facts. You know what I mean, this one I feel like is just big facts, and I feel like it speaks for itself. Her ways are pleasant ways, and all of her paths are peace, which true. True, true, true. You know what I'm saying? So there's another good weight to why you should try to invest in wisdom is that peace is a lot more valuable than a lot of things. You know what I mean? Like, um, like I, I brought up Andrew Tate before and all these other like shysters and stuff like that. Like Donald Trump, manage Donald Trump. You think that he's got a peaceful life? I, I feel like he wasn't very wise in a lot of the decisions he made. You know what I'm saying? So like, I'm not trying to get political. I'm just saying in general, wisdom can bring, will bring you peace. Having a lot of wisdom and applying wisdom, applying the correct knowledge and stuff like that. Disc and discretion and all this other stuff is going to give you peace. And peace is very valuable. That's like why a lot of people are even hunting wealth in the first place, I would say, is because they're trying to get peace. Peace of mind, knowing that they're safe and secure. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Those who hold her fast will be blessed. So if you just try to get wisdom and hold on to it, you should be blessed. Blessing being, um, that's what people call lucky, I believe. Uh, blessed is fortunate. Uh, opportunities, stuff like that. By wisdom, the Lord laid the earth's foundations. By understanding, he set the heavens in place. By his knowledge, the watery depths were divided and the clouds let drop the dew. This is just a fancy little poem, just glazing God, glazing Jesus up. I'm saying, my son, do not, or I guess technically Solomon isn't glazing. Well, I guess, you know, whatever. He's glazing God. Anyway, my son, do not let wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment and discretion. They will be life for you, an ornament to grace your neck. Then you will go on your way in safety and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Have no fear of sudden disaster or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked. For the Lord will be at your side and will keep your foot from being snared. Okay, right. So wisdom will provide you peace of mind. And, um, the more, you know, like if you know how to make money a certain way, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I have a lot more peace knowing that I can go get a machine operator job. Probably I could generate this much money doing these types of jobs. I know how to behave. I know all of the, um, the ins and outs of like most factories and stuff like that and how to like, I've multiple, I've, I've operated a bunch of uh, machines. I've, I've worked with a bunch of management teams. I've dealt with a bunch of different cultures. So I have peace of mind knowing that. And that's a lot of wisdom I gained from that experience and stuff like that. And if I, as long as I just remember all those lessons from my experiences and I don't just try to like shut out the past, I will have more, whatever, you know what I mean? Like, that's just what this is kind of saying. Like the more wisdom you have, the more this will be applied to you. So the more wisdom you get, this is like an exponential curve, right? So like, oh uh, wait, can you see that graph? Okay. Yeah, I'll just move my camera a little bit. All right. So this would be wisdom, the wisdom curve. And then this would be the peace curve or the peace, the peace graph. And then the more you get, It'll go like, oh, I guess it won't curve backwards, but you know what I mean? You get my point, hopefully. The more it'll go up. It'll exponentially go up. The more the more wisdom you have, the more peace you'll get. More wisdom, more peace. More peace, more wisdom. So, you know what I mean? Like they go hand in hand is what this is saying. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbor, come back tomorrow and I'll give it to you when you already have it with you. Okay? So this is important. Um... This is like those Christians that everybody makes fun of, the ones that like pray for people and don't actually, you know, thoughts and prayers, that joke about Christians. Uh, when Christians 
I think that's a part of the reason why the Bible says that you should be praying in private and don't talk about it and don't show it to the streets because you it's just like it looks silly, honestly. Um, it is nice to send people thoughts and prayers and stuff like that, but it is also really nice to send them money if they need it. You know what I'm saying? Like if you got money to spare and you you are, you come across somebody who actually needs that money, regardless if you think they're going to buy booze or not, you should give it to them. Okay, especially if you have access, because again, those who give get. So when you start withholding from people, you start the habit of withholding from people, then you give less. So then you get less. Okay. Does that make sense? It's like, it's very important to not, if you can't give money, don't give money. You know what I mean? That's not what this is saying. It's not saying like, go take all your money out, destroy your family by emptying out your 401k and then going to give it to a bunch of bums who are going to buy a bunch of heroin. It's not what it's, it's not what it's saying. I'm just saying it's, it's, it's being very clear here. If you, it is in your power to act, so like search your own heart, you'll you'll feel it. You have a conscience. We all have consciences and stuff. We'll all be able to determine if we're if it is able to happen. But if it is in your power to act, you should give to people because again, if you practice withholding, it restricts you. Okay, now you're getting in the habit of restricting from people, um, just because, just because you don't want to, and then that's that's where the problem comes in. It's one thing to not give to people because. You can't, but it's another thing to give people because you don't want to, okay? And that's where, like, hardness and heart comes from and stuff like that. And then that sh that would restrict, you know, that increases the likelihood that you're going to be restricted in an opportunity because you withhold, withheld to this person here. So now you're more than likely to withhold in another place. And the more you withhold, it's, you know, it's like a, you're either growing or dying. Like, things are either get, going, getting stronger or other things are getting weaker. So, you know, like the cigarette. You know, the more you smoke cigarettes, the more you're going to want a cigarette. The more you resist it, um, the less you're going to want to smoke. It's the same thing for withholding as well or giving and stuff like that. It's very difficult. You got to be careful. Um, anyway. Do not plot harm against your neighbor who lives trustfully near you. Do not accuse anyone for no reason when they have done you no harm. Do not envy the violent or choose any of their ways. For the Lord detests the perverse. But takes upright, but takes the upright into his confidence. So this is just a call out. It's just telling you don't do these things because karma, the Lord, whatever you want to say, will correct. They will balance the universe, so to speak. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the righteous. He mocks proud mockers. Think of a lot of people who talk a lot of shit. Okay, think like for instance, Trump was shot at, and they, this guy uh, made a joke about how. They think the um, the white cut his ear was glass from a teleprompter, so they thought it was very funny how he bashes Joe Biden and Obama for using teleprompters, but he was also using one himself, and that's a big joke now against Donald Trump. So I'm just saying. But he shows favor to the humble and the oppressed, okay? So nobody, this should go without saying. Uh, humble people who talk down about themselves, who do not boost themselves, do not make huge deals of themselves, tend to get treated more nicely than people who are braggadocious, people who are full of pride, people who are up their own ass, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, the wise inherit honor, but fools get only shame. And I think that's it. So that is episode three done. And you know what I mean? This shouldn't be too hard for me to break down. The wise inherit honor, you know what I'm saying? If you know stuff and you create good results from the knowledge you pick up through wisdom, People will honor you. They'll be like, that guy's smart. That guy knows what he's talking about. That guy, he's a good worker. He's a good da 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 da, da. You know what I mean? Like they'll praise, 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 praise. But the fool, you know, the 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 loud drunk, the the guy always arguing with everybody, the guy constantly making jokes and making fun of everybody. Maybe it's not even like they don't get, they get shame. You know what I mean? They, they, they become what they uh, practice, a joke. You make if you only joke around, then you become what you practice, and then you become a joke. You know what I mean? This was a big. Uh, can't read that. This is a big problem I had. I struggled for this for a while, and I'm still on the fence about whether joking is even worth my time. Uh, sometimes I joke as like in this video, um, but I cringe at myself every time I do go too hard into a joke. Uh, but still, like I feel like you are what you practice, and if you joke all the time, you just only become a joke. That's all I'm saying. But yeah, it's episode three. Hope you guys liked it. Subscribe if you are this far in because, uh, yeah, if you sat there listening to me talk for 29 minutes, I think you should be subscribed. Hope you guys are getting some value out of how to grow wealth, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hopefully this is helping you guys out. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Okay. See you later.